Raymond Carey was 16 years old. He left his residence in Bloomfield, Connecticut on October the 25th, 1963. He never returned home. That evening, he told his parents that he was going to see a movie. It's believed that he ended up at a bowling alley instead, and that from there he went to Pi Kappa Sigma Sorority Dance. The dance was held at the Lithuanian Dance Hall on Lawrence in Hartford, Connecticut. It's been reported that he declined a ride home from the dance with a friend, saying that he already had a ride. A young woman also came forward to report that she had seen Raymond leave with three other teenage boys. He was never seen again. Raymond's parents became concerned when Raymond never returned home. In addition to reporting him missing, they contacted a newspaper in northern Maine. Raymond's father had grown up in Maine, and although Raymond had never visited, they considered the possibility that he might have gone there. There is very little information available about Raymond's disappearance. The identity of the three boys he was seen leaving with don't seem to be known. I will be the first to say that I don't know much about sororities. However, from the research I have attempted to do on Pi Kappa Sigma, it appears that this sorority no longer existed as of 1959. Of course, with my lack of understanding about sororities, I'm just assuming that any sorority of that name would be a chapter. But maybe there was a small local one that just happened to have the same name. I also question how common it would be for a high school boy to attend a sorority dance at a college. Just a cursory search online didn't make it seem like something that occurs very often. Of course, I know very little about his home life, but his father was an experimental technician. His mother was a stay-at-home mother, and he had one sister. They lived in a nice house in Bloomfield, which is less than 10 miles from Hartford. He was a junior at Bloomfield High School and was active in sports through his church. It doesn't appear that he would have had any reason to run away. He had no history of doing that. In the early 1960s, it was certainly more likely that a teenager would accept a ride from strangers so I don't think he necessarily would have known the three boys he reportedly left with. But I also find it hard to believe that three teenage boys, whether known to him or not, would have harmed him, and none of them would have spoken up over the last 60 years. It makes me wonder how sure the witness was that the person they saw was actually Raymond. Raymond's father passed away never knowing what happened to his son. His mother was still alive as of 1997. So keep in mind these are these cases were written about, and they're older cases. So um, this is from the Charlie Project, and they have an age progression here. Missing since October the 25th, 1963. He was white. He would be 76 years old today now. He was 5 foot 6, 130 pounds. He was last seen wearing a green sweater, dark green sports shirt, black and gray suede shoes, and black pants. Um, he had brown hair and blue eyes, and he had a scar on his lip. Um, he left his home in the 70 block of Bloomfield, Connecticut around 7.15 p.m., saying that he was going to a movie, but it's believed he had a change of plans and ended up going to a bowling alley and then to a Pi Kappa Sigma sorority dance. It's possible that he went to the bowling alley. Maybe he went to the movie theater and the friends that maybe he was supposed to meet some friends and they all said we're going bowling instead. Um, or maybe he went to the bowling alley and lied to his parents, which is known to happen sometimes. But 
while he was at the dance, he told someone that he had a ride home, and it was reported that he was seen leaving with three boys. Um, he often played basketball and softball at Bethel Baptist Church. He had no history of being a runaway or having gotten into any kind of trouble. And that's all there really is about him. Um, it could be possible that he, that this woman or this witness who reported seeing him getting into the car with these other three teenagers, maybe a fight broke out later between them. Maybe they ended up going someplace else and drinking or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's possible that he wasn't even one of the boys who got into the car. Um, I don't know. This is just one of those cases that just seems as though someone just disappeared into thin air and no answers. And the reason that I myself and other people who have these web pages and stuff talk about the clothing and stuff that they were wearing when these cases were that old is just because in the event that maybe you know remains were ever found as as this story tells he his this was reported in 1997 his mother was still living that it was reported that he had one sister they might have given DNA. Of course, keep in mind if his mother died, um, let's see if I can find anything else about him on any other websites. If he does still have a sister who's possibly still living, maybe she had children, grandchildren, Maybe they could give their DNA, and maybe if remains are found, or maybe remains have been found, you know, there could one day be a match. I wanted to share a couple of stories that I had saved on Facebook. Sometimes when I'm scrolling through, I'll come across a story that I find of interest and I save it and come back later and I just wanted to kind of lump a couple of these together because some of them have information and some of them have a little information but this one is from missing people and cold cases in Kentucky this is the story of Reuben Curtis Kinney and I just want to read this from the moderator of this page Given the fact that Mr. Kinney would be roughly 110 years old at the moment, it's probably safe to assume that he is dead. However, the family still deserves closure. Law enforcement needs to be able to close this case. If anyone knows anything about Mr. Kinney, please contact the Kentucky State Police at the Moorhead Post. So the story is, Reuben Curtis Kinney went missing from Vanceburg, Kentucky in Lewis County. The last date that he was seen was September the 3rd, 1975. He was six foot tall and weighed 140 pounds. He had gray hair and hazel eyes. He had suffered several strokes prior to his disappearance and had recently been diagnosed diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He was last seen in Goodwin Branch Hollow in Vanceburg. He went to use the bathroom in the early morning hours and never returned. He has never been heard from again. An extensive search involving scent dogs turned up no indication of his whereabouts. Um, a memorial monument was erected in Hackworth Cemetery in Lewis County. If anyone has any information, contact Kentucky State Police Post 8 at 606-784-4127. Um, they said that he had what is known as an outhouse. Those of us from 
the mountains and the hills of Appalachia know what an outhouse is. Uh, not very many people probably use them at this time. I, I was surprised to read that in 1975 people were still using them, but I guess some older homes never had plumbing. But an outhouse, for those who might not know, is a bathroom outdoors. Um, so he had gone outside to his outhouse, and he never came back in. I don't know if he lived alone, if he was married, but this is the story that he went to use the outhouse in the early morning hours and didn't come back inside the house. So something could have happened to him um, in the night. He could have become disoriented or confused and just wandered off into the woods. I'm sure searches were done. Theories from the family is that he became disoriented and wandered onto someone else's property. Maybe he was mistaken for an intruder and someone shot him and disposed of his body. Well, maybe, possibly, but I would be surprised by that. I think most normal people if this happened and they realized I've shot I've shot this old man who was probably just wandering lost, they would probably call the police and say, you know, I didn't know. I thought he was here to break into my home. Maybe he did try to go into someone else's home thinking that it was his. And maybe something like that did happen. Uh, uh, game wardens in the area... His family reported his disappearance, and game wardens brought out their search dogs, searched the area, but did not find him. So there's really not a lot else to add to this story. This man was in his 70s. He supposedly went outdoors to use his outhouse late in the night hours, early morning hours, and vanished and was never seen again. Um, surely if his... If he had passed away from exposure or a fall of some kind, his remains would have been found. I, I don't have any idea. I wonder if the police did any real investigation into this. Did they investigate the family and this story? Is it possible that this man was, you know, died in some other way and this story was created to cover this up. I'm not saying that. I'm just asking that question. But to wrap this video up, I'll just say there's very little else to go on. And after all these years, this is just a cold case that is one of those that will probably never be solved unless some remains do turn up. I found another story I wanted to include in this video. It's another one that has very few details. I found this on Unsolved Appalachia, and I'm going to read it just as they have it here. This post is going to be one of the shorter ones, since there isn't very much information online about this case. Regardless, I feel that everyone deserves a mention, even if I can't give them a very paragraphed page of factual details, I will give what I can. James P. Hillis, age 35, was last seen when he left his home in Bar Branch, Kentucky, in Leslie County, on September the 12th, 1993, to go to his job. His truck was located 130 miles away on September the 15th, 1993, in Knoxville, Tennessee. The keys were still in the ignition. It's believed he may have left the country. That's it. That's all the information there is. I wonder why they would think that he may have left the country. Where did he work? Did he even make it to work that day? Did law enforcement check flight records? There's so many questions and no answers. If you knew James or anyone that may have a lead on this, please contact the Kentucky State Police at 606 Four three five six zero six nine. Um, I, there really wasn't any more information on him. The only other link I found was on Namus James Patrick Hillis. 
white male, last date of contact, September 12th, 1993. He was 35 years old at the time. He would be 65 today. Um, he was six foot tall and 185 pounds. Bar Branch, Kentucky, in Leslie County. He went to work on the 12th of September, 1993, and never returned home. His truck was discovered in Knoxville with the keys still in the ignition. And that's about it, really. They said he wears, he wears eyeglasses, and he had a mustache. He was wearing a work shirt. I don't know if he was married, if he had children, who was the last person that had contact with him. Um, there's really nothing more to go on here. Um, I, I looked, and I know that Unsolved Appalachia did their research, and they could find no more details on this. Why did they believe he left the country? Had he gotten into some kind of trouble, legal trouble? Was it a custody dispute or children involved, uh, a bad divorce or something of that nature? Had he gotten in some type of trouble at his job? Was money missing or anything like that? There's no details here. It's just the case of a man who got up one morning, got dressed to go to work, and three days later his truck is found um, in another state. So what happened in the days before his truck was found? Three days passed from the last time he was seen to the day that his truck was found. And just like the other article asked the question, were flight records checked? What led people to think he was leaving the country? Did he have family or friends in another country? Um, was he going on an extended vacation? Had he talked about this with anybody? This is just one of those completely blank disappearances. There's nothing. Maybe one day some answers will turn up. Maybe he will turn up. If he did leave the country and go to some other place, did he remove all of his money from the bank before he left? It liquidate his assets? You know, what gives people the idea to say it's believed he went to another country? Was his truck found near the airport? You know? Just little details like that, and there's nothing here. I will look on YouTube, and I will look on Facebook and see if there's any more pages about him. But as of right now, this is all there is. Thanks for watching.